Hello again and welcome to the BEX EDM YouTube channel. And in this video, part 6 in my video series in which I build my MK2 uh, DIY wire EDM machine, I'm going to make some more parts for the C arc. So today I'll be making this part, which is the flexure that uh, positions the uh, upper wire guide. Um, I'll also discuss these two rollers. So this roller here and this roller, these are concave and convex rollers that join together to uh, pinch the wire so that you can apply torque to it. I'll also discuss the upper wire guide body, this part, and the lower wire guide body. So the flexure is uh, made from 20 by 20 millimeter and 2 millimeters thick stainless steel. And apart from drilling a few holes, um, yeah, the tricky bit is to make the flexure hinges uh, yeah, nice and accurate. So at first I tried to wire cut the complete flexure holes here. And then when you cut one side, everything's a okay. And then when you start cutting the other side, everything is okay until you pass this point here, after which the material starts to deform because there is internal stress. And yeah, because everything is so thin, the deformation can be quite large. Um, and then the part starts to move, but the EDM machine does not know this. It keeps right on track, but because yeah, the part moves, then you get a deformed cut. So you could make a tool that uh, holds the part straight, um, such that you can make the cut. Um, but yeah, making a tool was uh, more work than uh, the other solution that I came up with, which is instead more of a conventional way of working. So um, instead of uh, wire cutting uh, all holes here, I center drilled the holes, drilled them through, and then reamed them. So I had the holes only. And then for the cuts, I used wire EDM. Um, yeah, if you do it in that order, then uh, you do not have any deformation and uh, you get a really nice result. So that's what I did. And I'll show you, yeah, the, the process of uh, drilling, reaming, and wire cutting this flexure. Okay, so I've center drilled and drilled through and reamed a bunch of holes. So these are the uh, holes for the flexure. These need to be really accurate, so I reamed these. And these I just drilled. So now the last bit is to make these cuts, uh, which I could do with a normal pen saw or hand saw, but uh, I don't like the finish that that gives. Um, so I'm going to EDM cut these, uh, these cuts here. That's a lot nicer.
Okay, looks like all cuts are finished. So, let's have a look. Yep. Okay, all cuts have been made. So now you can see how the flexure works. Let me put something beneath it here. So we have two degrees of freedom. We can tilt like this, this direction, and this direction. So X and Y. And this uh, flexure will allow and the mechanics to position the upper flushing head relative to the lower flushing head or flushing head or wire guide or whatever you want to call it so nice so the next parts are the concave and convex rollers here and uh, yeah let's have a look at how they turned out So here are the uh, wire rollers. Um, I did not machine these myself. Um, I could have, but I have a conventional uh, lathe. And I could have machined this by making uh, concave and convex inserts to cut these. But uh, yeah, I have a, a friend who owns a local job shop and he has a CNC machine. And he offered me to uh, yeah, to make these parts for, for me. So saves me some work and uh, yeah, the result is really nice. So these are um, 304 stainless steel. They match together quite nicely. I already inserted the uh, the bearing, this full ceramic bearing. It fits nicely. So these two rollers will be pushed against each other and will pinch the wire that goes in between. So because uh, another job shop made them, I do not have uh, footage on how these were turned on the CNC lathe, but uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward work. So Next up, the wire guide bodies. So the upper wire guide and the lower wire guide. So here are the upper and lower wire guide mounts. I did not machine these myself, not because I can't, but because I'm very limited in my time. And while I was over at the local job shop um, for uh, machining the uh, concave and convex wire rollers they asked me if they could help me out with anything else for free um, because uh, yeah they still owed me a favor since i fixed their cnc machine a while ago so of course uh, i gave them some extra work uh, because that saves me time and i'm really busy making arc generators so uh, i could use the help so these were machined from uh, 304 uh, stainless and yeah, these are the bodies on which the wire guides are fixed. So the wire guides are supposed to be screwed on here, which at this moment they cannot because uh, a part is missing that should interface the wire guide with the wire guide body. And that part I, I will make myself, that's still missing. Um, so that part screws in here and then the, the wire guide itself screws on top. And then on top of that again, is the uh, flushing head that screws on here like so now these parts are not that hard to make just uh, take some time so you have some round stock then you machine a flange on it like this and then on a the lathe you can cut these threads it's a uh, m30 with a 1.5 millimeter pitch then when you have that you can uh, drill a hole um, tap the uh, uh, the wire for the uh, wire guide interface um, drill a hole here um, well this hole needs to be machined you cannot do this on your lathe because it's not in the center 
and then when you have that finished you can uh, mount it in a vise on a milling machine you can uh, machine this pocket here uh, you can drill a hole here or mill it and tap it because this hole will receive the interface to the hose so this is the hose connector like so and then you still need to uh, drill and tap two holes and that uh, these are the holes on which the uh, flexure is screwed and yeah it's about the same for the lower one that one is even easier you don't need to machine a pocket you just need to machine this part off tap two holes that's it yeah so that's it for the uh, for the wire guides Here's the flushing nozzle that I selected for the MK2. It's uh, almost the same as the MK1 nozzle. And the only difference is that this hole uh, by itself is uh, 2 millimeters, And the MK1 nozzle that I'm uh, using uh, is actually a bit larger. I think it's 6 millimeters, And I made an insert in it. Actually tried several inserts for the uh, flushing head and I tuned the hole diameter uh, such that it matches the, uh, the flow and pressure of my pump and uh, when I finished tuning it turned out that 2 millimeters was the perfect uh, size of the hole so now instead of using a flushing nozzle with a 6 millimeter hole and an insert I ordered the, uh, the exact uh, hole size of 2 millimeters so then you don't need the insert anymore. So this type is uh, it's originally from a Fanduk machine. It's an F213-2 with a 2mm hole. So that's the uh, the flushing head. So it's an OEM part. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. In the next video I'll be making a lot of uh, wire rollers, just uh, plain ones, straight, instead of concave or convex. I'll be doing that on my conventional lathe. I'll also make the part that joins the wire guide with the wire guide body. And I'll make a motor flange interface, uh, a part that uh, fixes the motor to the mounting plate. So see you next time.